Good morning all. So we're doing another video for you today. We're actually going to try and cram in two cards. They're both quite quick cards, so thought we would um, try and get a few more in today. So let's have a look at what we're going to be using. So we've got the floor tile die, um, which is one of our background dies. We have also got the bamboo messages stamp set and the Be Artful stamp set. Um, we are going to be using Distress Oxides in Evergreen Borough and uh, Cracked Pistachio. We've also got the Versa Mark ink pad, the White White Embossing Powder and the Honeydew Craft Sticky Glue. We will also be using, um, as I say, two cards. So for the second card we'll be using lots of colours of Distress inks. We've got Picked Raspberry, Carved Pumpkin, Squeezed Lemonade, Twisted Citron, Broken China, uh, cracked pistachio, tumble glass, wilted violet, and seedless preserve. So they'll be coming along as well. Um, just because we are using the floral tile die in this particular collection, or particular card, should I say, um, it doesn't mean that's the only one you can use. We do obviously have a large selection of dies, so I thought I would show you a few more of them. We've got the basket weave die, which we've, which is also a new launch for us. We've got the gingham die, and these are all roughly five by seven. Some are slightly wider, some are slightly longer, um, but that's a rough guide. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> and then we've got the tartan die, the ribbons die, encircle die back in stock. Um, this one goes in and out of stock quite quickly, so. Um, hopefully we've got enough to keep us going for a little while now. And last but not least, the palm leaves die. So all the techniques I do with our background dies, predominantly all of them can be used for exact, in exactly the same way. So if you've already got one that you want to use, um, that would be just perfect. Um, I seem to be having a bit of an issue with my camera today. It feels like it's on a slope. But it's not, so who knows? Let's have a go at that. Maybe that's a bit better. That looks a little bit better. There we go. So we have got the Make Art Station back in stock again. Every time I tell you we've got it back in stock, um, something comes up. Oh, look, there we go. There's another die that I forgot about. The Illusions die that was stuck to the bottom of my box. So that's all of our dies. So we've got the Make Art Station back in stock. Each video I tell you we have it, and by the time I've published the video, it's sold out again. So I'm hoping this time I've got enough stock in for everybody. So this one is now back in stock. It is a 12 by 12 magnetic board, <coughs> excuse me, which is fabulous for stencils, but you can use it for anything. And we have also got the foam pads back in stock. They, you get 1600 on a roll and there are, oh, sorry, they are two and a half centimeters square by two mil thick. So I think that's everything. So should we get started? Um, we've got, as I say, I'm gonna try and cram in two cards. Both of them are quite quick cards to do. Um, I just decided to do the two because I mentioned one of them in last week's video and I thought, well, this one, the first card I'm doing is so quick, this would be the perfect opportunity to show you what to do. So here we go, first card we have got, um, this is an eight by eight card that I have cut down and I'm gonna be using it this way on. And I've cut it down to five and a quarter by seven and three eighths. I know I'm really awkward with all the three eighths bits. I've always worked with inches in my crafting, not centimetres. I apologise, ladies and gentlemen, that are centimetre workers. Um, but that's what the size we need to do what I'm going to be doing. We're also going to need a piece of cardstock to cut your die out. Or you can cut your die out first and we'll colour it separately. So first of all, we're going to colour this. And I've got one that I've coloured earlier to, to show you. But here we, so this is what we're going to start with. Um, I just want to whip this here for a second. Just one little thing to let you know, if I just in case I forget and I'm thinking about it while I'm here. Um, you're going to lay your card, when you put it through the die cut, you're going to lay it down, colour side up. So we're going to colour on the top. I always put my die flat to the mat. That's what I was always taught, flat to the mat. And because they're a big die, pop them in on a slight angle, as much of an angle as you can get on the width of your machine. So if you've got a six inch machine, you're not going to get much. But if you've got a 12, uh, A4 machine, you'll get a lot more movement there. 
place your card on top and run it through the machine. This way you can see if it hasn't cut, you know where it hasn't cut and you can just, I would always just turn it around the other way or move it across slightly and then run it through the machine again. Um, and then you can see that it's all been cut without picking up, turning over and the die all moving, etc. etc. So yeah, that's me waffling a little bit, but it'll make it makes sense, I think I hope. So really it's just two pieces and I've got a tiny little piece of vellum here which I've cut to one inch by five and a half inches and it again it will make sense in a little while while it's why it's slightly larger. So we will start by just colouring this. I'm just gonna pop this on here because it keeps me in place. If you want, I've said about these magnetic boards before, you can take your um, mat from underneath and it covers it over your magnetic board, it protects your board but it allows you to still do all your colouring etc or stenciling or whatever it is you're doing um, with the, um, trying to do two things at once, I shouldn't try and do that should I, it allows you to do your blending and keep your cardstock in place. So we've actually had to go for a new sponge today, I think I wore my other one out. So this is Evergreen Borough. I never know how I'm supposed to say that. Evergreen Bow, Evergreen Borough. I don't know. Anyway, it's Evergreen something or other. And I'm just going to go down the middle here. Again, quite a light touch, she says. And then I just put on loads of ink. So we'll ignore my light touch comment. And we'll just go with it. So I'm just blending this in. And don't go too strong along the edge. Try and not give yourself a real hard edge. But again, because we're die cutting this, it's quite forgiving when you're die cutting. It will kind of hide where you haven't blended. But I just try and not give myself too hard of a straight line edge along here. That's my aim anyway. It doesn't always work. We're going to blend those and then we're going to take the cracked pistachio and pick up some of that colour. My oxides are so well loved, they're getting a little dry now. So we're just going to come in with the cracked pistachio along the edge again. Now, obviously you can see there's quite a hard line there. So I'm just gonna go back in with this one and then while it's still wet, over the top with the cracked pistachio and that will help to blend it through, we hope, a little. Um, and just keep working it. As I said, we're going to die cut this piece of cardstock so it really doesn't matter if it's not beautifully blended. Well, I say we're going to die cut it. You're not actually going to see me die cut it because I've done that ahead of schedule because, as I said, I wanted to fit as much to fit this in, these cards in really, really quickly. So, um, <clears throat> and I said they were going to be really quick, easy cards, but it seems to be taking me a little longer to blend this than I was hoping. And then back to the other side. My ink pads are all very well loved and they're starting to need their re-inking. So I'm slowly working on that. Um, normally I cheat and just buy a new ink pad. But I thought, you know what? Let's just try some of these re-inkers and then I've got the inks to play with as well. Which is always a bonus. So again, try and blend that hard colour out. Hard line, should I say, not hard colour. So I'm going to go over this line with my crepe pistachio and then back with the evergreen bow, whatever it is. Okay, I'm going to come a little bit further over on this side, I think even this out a little bit and maybe get rid of that hard line I can still see there. There 
there we go, that's what we wanted. Got myself all confused now, there we go. <laughs> Doesn't take much today. So there we go, we've blended those. As I say, they don't have to be perfect. And you would then take this piece of cardstock, pop your die flat down on the mat, and then colour side, oh I lied, it's colour side down. Or well, colour side down and turn it round. Now ladies and gentlemen, I can hear my little doggy wandering around and I'm hoping she's just going to settle and go back to sleep. But if not, hopefully Martin will hear her and come and rescue her. Because <laughs> we'd quite like to just carry on with the video. Once you've run it through the die cut machine, you will hopefully end up with a lovely piece that looks a little bit like this. Or if you would prefer, die cut it out white and then colour it from there. But it also looks quite cool, look, with the white on top of those two colours. So see, there's so many different things you can do with it. Just going to quickly wipe over my mat really fast. Get rid of where I was doing that blending. And then we'll take our piece of vellum and I'm just going to pop an anti-static bag over the top of that. We do have these on our website if you don't have one. It just helps a little bit to stop the stray pieces of embossing powder once you stamp onto here. Because I'm going to stamp with Versamark and I'm going to pop white white embossing powder over the top. Ink your stamp up, take your stamp, your ink to your stamp, not your stamp to your ink. It's always much more successful. I'm just going to bring that a little bit closer. And then roughly in the middle, I hope. Press that down. Don't press too hard with lettering, but enough for the ink to, to sit, sit on there. I may have spent a little bit longer normally doing that but um it lifted itself off so hey ho we'll go with what we've got and give it a light tap to take the excess off put that back in the pot and then we're going to take the heat gun obviously we're heating embossing on vellum that's not straight at all but you'll get the idea so we're heating embossing onto the vellum so I'm going to hold it in the air to allow the heat to travel through. So we've got our get well soon. So I've popped some foam pads on the back of this and what I should have done was peel these sticky bits off before I came to record it so it was ready but I didn't so bear with me a couple of moments while I just whip these off here can you believe we've been 13 minutes already from oh I suppose really with the card it hasn't taken us that long I suppose has it you had to listen to me waffle to start with hopefully you're all hearing me I've just remembered I'm supposed to be shouting and I'm not so I will speak a little louder and hopefully you're managing to hear what I'm saying I was speaking to a couple of ladies today during the week about some workshops that we were planning to do, but obviously have had to be rescheduled. Um, and they were saying that they really, really enjoy the videos and they look forward to the meets week. So now the pressure's on, I've got to do a video every single week, <laughs> which I quite like, but it's very strange because I was also saying to them, it's weird doing the videos because you don't get any comeback. So nobody's there asking me questions or talking to me. It's just me talking to a camera, which is a bit weird. <coughs> Excuse me. So before I stick this down, I want to work out where I want my sentiment to be positioned. Because all I'm going to do, and now I've got foam pads there, so that was going to be in the way. Um, so I might move it up slightly. No, nope. do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to whip that foam pad off because it's right where I wanted it to be. that's about right 
And all I'm going to do is bend that vellum around to the edges. As I said, my sentiment's not straight, so I apologise. Then I'm going to pop a little bit of glue just on there to hold that in place. I always put my vellum on the back because it will stick my vellum around the back of things because it hides your workings. And then get that as straight as I can. Bit of an illusion, I suppose, we will have to have here. Just hold that in place for a couple of seconds just to allow that glue to stick that down. And then I'm going to pop a foam pad in where I just took that one off from. Okay. And just flip this over. And we're going to take the card and we're just going to, ooh, got to position this without getting my head in the way. No, that's not in the middle, is it? Maybe I should try and do it from the camera rather than looking at it. Probably about there. That looks about right, I think. Yeah. And there we have it. One finished Get Well Soon card. How cute is that? So, obviously, I'll we'll keep it around the way we were. So, obviously, it opens up. So like so and if you wanted you can just pop a sentiment in there um there's lots of different sentiments on those sets of stamps we've got let me just grab them and i can tell you what other different ones we could pop on there just from these two stamp sets so we've obviously got just have fun the best is yet to come good luck and get well soon and then on the be artful set we've got be kind be happy and be humble um, I am also going to just pop a couple of little gems, I think, in the middle of this, just to make it pop. And it just picks that. Helps if the sticky comes off with my gem, doesn't it? There we go. Finishing touches always work that up so you can see those in there so there we go there's our get well soon card so now I'm going to quickly move on and show you the um, other card I had planned to show you oh everything's falling bear with me here we go so let's just quickly clear these pieces out of the way so we don't get in a mug and show you what we are doing with this card to have left a piece of cards at back in the craft room so we'll just quickly recut those that's always the way isn't it so bear with me a second so you get to see how we're cutting them now so we need one piece which is let me just double check that, which piece i've got here and which piece i've left next door yeah there we go so we have a piece which is six inches by seven and five eighths so one two three four five eighths i know i'm really awkward and then we have a white piece which is going to be five and seven eighths seven and a half see emergency planning <laughs> excuse me so here we go let's start again <laughs> so we've just got a little piece here that I've just cut and I've layered to pop a sentiment on there um, so it depends on your sentiment that you're going to choose as to what size you need it to be. We then have the two pieces you've just seen me cut, which are black piece is six by seven and five eighths. And the white piece is five and seven eighths by seven and a half. And that is literally to do that layering. Just the tiniest, tiniest little black board around the edge. It just helps make it pop a little bit. 
and then we have a black piece which is seven and three sixteenths. See, I'm really getting you going now. And the black, sorry, the white piece is, sorry, the black piece is seven and three sixteenths by five and one eighth. And the white piece is, oh, you're really gonna dis dislike me. Hmm. I'm going to trim that down a little because that doesn't look quite right. That's because I decided to do this in last minute to, to add this one in. So I'm going to just take a smidge off the end of that. That looks a bit better. So we'll start again. The black piece is seven and I would say it's probably seven and what do you reckon? One or two sixteenths. Just give yourself a border to go around the edge of this by by five and one eighth. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm confusing you here. And this one is four and fifteen sixteenths. Oh, good grief! What was I playing at? By six and seven eighths. Hopefully, that will make a little bit of sense to you. You also need a piece that you can die cut um, your um, background die from. So whichever one you're using. Again, we're going to go ahead and use the floral tile one, which I have already cut out. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's get going. I am going to pop the two black pieces and the floral tile die that I've already cut out off to one side and the black layer for my sentiment to one side. We're going to be working on these three pieces pretty much all together. Um, let's right the colours we are using are as I said earlier picked raspberry, carved pumpkin, squeezed lemonade, Twisted citron, cracked pistachio, broken china, tumbled glass, wilted violet, and seedless preserve. And we're kind of going to be going around in that order. So we've got a rainbow. But I need to stretch them out, move them about a little bit here, I think. I need some space. So we're going to start with the first one, and we are going to take the brush stroke stamp that I told you about. I'm going to pop some ink on here and then drag it through so it looks like you've painted it with a brush. And we're going to move these up a little bit more. I need as much room as I can get today. And we're going to stamp this straight down onto the cardstock. And lift it off. We're going to do the same on this piece. And again, we're going to take the ink and we're going to pop some ink on there and then drag it down so it's like a paintbrush. And it doesn't matter it's not, if it's not perfect, it is a paintbrush stroke. Remember though, you've got nine colours to fit on here. So try and work it as best you can to get those nine colours on here. And then we're going to take the wet wipe and clean that colour off. And pop that to one side. And then we're going to go with carved pumpkin and we're going to do exactly the same thing. So we're going to ink this stamp up and then drag it down to take to give you the brush strokes. They don't have to be the same way around each time. Um, I'm just doing the two at a time, the two pieces of cardstock at the same time because then it means you don't have to keep color recoloring it. Flip that over. And I, as I say, I don't want them to be absolutely perfect 
um, each time you stamp them out because I want it to look like a brush has stroke has been sort of you've just got with the brush stroke straight across your paper. That's the look I'm going for. Whether I achieve it, I don't know. So again, brush it through to give you that look. And you can overlap these a little bit as well. Don't be scared to overlap. As I said, you've got to get nine colours on here. So I've just realised why I'm missing that bit each time I'm stamping off the card here. I am going to go back in and try and get that on there. I was trying to work out what I was doing, but that's what it was. We weren't on the paper. It doesn't matter if you're not perfect when you line this up. There we go, that's better. And then down with the yellow. So it's, it's a little bit boring, I suppose, watching you do this, but you're gonna get the idea. And I just really, really liked the finish on this card when I did it. So I thought, you know what? We don't want blue. That's what happens when you put them in the wrong order. The next colour I need is a twisted citron. Drag that down. I'm going to turn the stamp around now because I want to make it a little bit interesting. Not all going the same way. realized I was probably blinking a lot of those and you weren't even seeing what I was doing way because I wasn't anywhere near the page or near the camera oh dear maybe I shouldn't have done the two cards in one video maybe I'm pushing my luck then on to crack pistachio oh that wasn't pleasant Don't be quite so vicious at taking as much dragging it across to take the ink off if you're finding the, the, the stamps a bit dry, the pads a bit dry. See what I mean, how it just builds up, it looks really effective. I just really love this finish, so I hope you will like it too. Now we can go to our broken china. This one's still quite a wet ink pad, so we don't need to layer the ink up so much on this one. It's gonna be a tight fit on this card to get everything in, but we will. to self maybe I should have got this partly stamped up beforehand now I want to use the um, next color for the sentiment as well because it's a nice pale color but it will still give us a nice finish so I'm going to just do that piece first so I don't forget now obviously it's a much smaller piece of card and I want to get that detail in there so I'm going to just stamp it like so, can you see, so that it's still got the effect and then I might just go back up there with, mm, no I'm not going to, I'm just going to leave it like that I think, she says, and I might not, oh, I might add a little bit more in here. just to fill in that piece of the card. So that's our sentiment piece done. And then we'll go back in and do our card. 
my mat, I didn't clean my mat off before I did. Oh, a little bit of pink in there, must have some. A little bit of pink on there, but that's fine because that's going to be covered over by the dye anyway. Turn it around again. everything back where it should be going and then that doesn't work when you don't do that does it uh, wilted violet next to be honest I should have maybe crammed these two up a little bit because this is going to be tight down the bottom here we're not going to see much of the seedless preserve but hey ho you'll still see it and the colours will still be there. And then last but not least, we're gonna use the Wilted Violet. So as I said, it's lots and lots of colours, but just go with what colours you have. It doesn't have to be these specific colours. And you don't have to do as many if you've only got a couple of colours of oxides or a couple of colours of whatever inks you want to use. Just alternate, use them alternately. Alternate them is the word I needed, wasn't it? When I use Seedless Preserve, I think oh, I really like that colour. It's an underused colour by me and I need to make myself use it more. Because I really like it. So there we have our background stamps ready to go. I'm just going to clean that off and get that out of the way. And I'm going to pop them to one side just for a second. I'm going to bring in my sentiment and my onyx black. sentiment in the middle and pop a little bit of crystal clear embossing powder over the top because I want that to pop and then we're just going to emboss this find your fingers on this one on here so it's out of our way it's one of those pieces that you could easily lose and this has got a really really tiny edge all the way around just need to wipe that anti-static bag off here it's driving me mad I should have stopped and done that but I didn't so we'll then take our card stocks the two that we just stamped and our black and I'm going to layer these directly onto the black card stock Goodness, we're at 34 minutes, I better hurry up. Oh, that 
time just whizzes, doesn't it? But we will have done two cards in that 35 minutes and cut half of one of them out because I forgot the piece and left it in the craft room next door. So we're going to pop this on over the top and you will only see a really, really tiny, tiny line of that black. That's what I want it to be. Now you've got two choices. You can pop that down on foam pads like you just saw me do previously or you can glue it straight down. I think I'm just going to go, mm. do I want it straight down or do I want some foam pads on there? What do you think? Straight down. We're going to go straight down. Just for quickness for the video, really. I think I probably would have preferred it to have a little bit of, of lift behind it, but we'll give it a lift in other ways. Spend a little bit of time doing this. Don't rush it like I am at the moment glue in these chunky pieces to hold it all in place and then we're going to pop that down on here she hopes with a little bit of room and it is just the tiniest border that you're going to have shouldn't have cut that other piece earlier and thought about what I was doing but hey ho I did so we're done so that's that piece done again I'm just going to pop some sticky dots in the middle just because I think it finishes it off a little bit and then we're going to piece this together Plenty of glue on there to hold that in place. I'm going to position that in the middle, off to one side slightly. And then this one, I am going to pop some foam pads on the back here. And that will give me the lift I was looking for. Nice and easy with the big foam pads to do this as well. So. Again, pop a little bit of glue on the back just to give you that wiggle room because these are super, super sticky foam pads. So once they touch that card, they'll want to stick really quickly. a little piece of offcut because I want to do this tiny tiny little bee stamp him out and I'm going to emboss him Should we do in blue? No, it will be normal and do yellow bee. Just going to pick up a little bit of colour on the brush. And it is just to literally to do that, to colour his belly. Let me see. Just coloured his belly. Try and get back in focus here. Snip him out. In fact, to save time, I was going to say I'm going to cut his antenna off, but you know I can't bring myself to do it. That's crazy, isn't it? <sighs> 
doesn't have to be beautiful. And this one isn't going to be beautiful. Spend a little bit more time maybe doing it than I've just done. The trick to doing the fussy cutting is to use your scissors, move your scissors rather than move um, your stamped image. Oh, sorry, move your stamped image rather than move your scissors. Try and keep your scissors in one place and that makes fussy cutting a lot easier. So we've cut him out and then I'm just literally going to flick his wings up a little bit using my fingernails. Pop a little bit of glue on his back. And I'm going to pop him onto the sentiment. And then foam pads on the back of my sentiment. Not been a very tidy crafter today, have I? Not very good. Get all of these bits out of the way. And then bring your stamp, your finish card in and just roughly wherever, pop it wherever you want it to be. I've gone there because it's kind of in that hue of colours, but it's entirely up to you. You could completely contrast it and put it up here. Maybe I should have done because look, you've got, you can see that mark mistake where I had hadn't pressed down on that bit there but you know it still looks you wouldn't know it's not not like it's meant to be there so there we go we've completed two cards in probably about 35 40 minutes I know we're a bit longer on the video but um, both using exactly the same die so we've used the floral tile die here um, and the Be Artful stamps and the um, bamboo messages stamp set so let's go back and have a quick look at what, which ones we've used. So these are the two stamp sets. So we've got Be Artful, which comes with the paint brush stroke stamp that we've just used, and the sentiments, Be Kind, Be Happy, Be Humble. And then you get the three little bees and the flourish that you saw me use in last week's demo. <coughs> and then we've got Bamboo Messages and we've used the Get Well message from here, but you've also got Good Luck, The Best Is Yet To Come, and Just Have Fun. And then we used the floral tile die, if I can find that one. So we also used the floral tile die. But we also have lots of others, so I'll just quickly run through those. So we have got the illusion die, the palm leaves die, encircle die, ribbons die, tartan die, gingham dye and basket weave dye. So I'll just show you a couple more samples of what we've used of these particular stamps. So this one is using the Be Artful stamp and that brush stroke you've just seen me using all the way around the edge has been used all the way around the edge of this card. Um, and then this is a really clean simple one again. This is just the brush strokes used. As I said if you've only got two or three colours in the oxides it works really well just like that as well. Um, this is using the floral tile stencil and the die. So I think this was Dorothy and she's actually taken the die and if I quickly flip back to our screen here, um, can we go there? There we go. So she's actually cut this section of the die out and just used the flowers. So she stamped it or die cut it a couple of times and just cut this section with a pair of scissors, fussy cut it to get these pe those pieces on there. Um, so your big flower in the middle and your two little flowers that are off to each side. Um, here's another one. So this is just using the flourish again from the Be Artful and the floral tile. And this is another one of the with the brush stroke using the bees. Again, that's just three colours of oxides and a really quick, simple, easy card to do. So here we go. Let's quickly whip back to what we've used to make these two cards. So to make these two cards, we use the floral tile die. The bamboo messages, be artful messages, both stamp sets and distress oxides. The distress oxide colours were um, picked raspberry, carved pumpkin, squeezed lemonade, twisted citron, cracked pistachio, uh, broken china, tumbled glass, wilted violet, and seedless preserve for this card. 
and for this card we use cracked pistachio and evergreen bar. I hope you enjoyed it today. Um, it's been quite a long video in the end, but you got two cards in, so let me know what you think to them. We'll post this video up and have a lovely weekend. Take care. Bye.